if you know me, you'll know I love my lighting mods. So, here in my hands, I have this box which contains a 55 watt H1-6000K Zenon kit. Oh yes. This right here is what I think is the best lighting upgrade you can do to your car. Here's one and here's the other. So what is a Zenon kit? Zenon HIDs, what are they? They are these things, but what exactly are they? These things isn't very descriptive. Zenon HIDs are literally exactly as the name suggests. Xenon is the gas which is used within the light, and HID stands for High Intensity Discharge, which is basically a posh way of saying it's bright. Literally, High Intensity Discharge, it's, it, it discharges light in a high intensity. It is extremely bright, in other words. These are the kind of lights modern cars use. Uh, in particular, you'll probably notice them on BMW, Mercedes, things like that. The high-end cars especially use these lights, but even pretty much any modern car has them these days, in all fairness. Now, Zen and HIDs, they are a twitchy subject when it comes to light and upgrade, but I'm going to be talking about doing it properly, making sure that your beam pattern's correct, you're not blind everyone, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, this is we're going to be doing light and upgrade the proper way. I've been outside. It is rain out there. I don't fancy doing this video in the rain. Plus, it's so much easier to do on my desk. So I've brought my headlight in off my car. And right here, we can start making work on the upgrade. I've only got one headlight, so we're just going to get rid of that one. And we're just going to work with the one Zenin kit because we have one headlight. Now, I did also want to show you an LED upgrade involving these night eye bulbs so we can compare both HID to LED and what is what I think is the ultimate lighting setup for your car. However, there's a small issue. When I tested these bulbs, but they're not happy. They glow, and I literally mean glow, and that's about it. They do not get bright. They glow. They are they're dead basically and they haven't even been used yet they're brand new and they're dead so um uh, i think they will have to be going back i'm afraid so we can't really be showing you this in today's video but i'll still talk about where i think these are appropriate for any road zenon kits zenon kits zenon kits these differ from a normal headlight bulb because there is much more electronics involved with them as you can see let me fetch out an ordinary bulb from my headlight. I'm going to take out this one because it's the easiest one. They're both relatively easy, but this one's the easiest. That's your headlight. That's it. On a normal bulb, this is your headlight. And this one's actually a bit black and charred, but it works. It lights up. And this is what we're going to be squeezing into there. Oh, okay, not quite. We're not quite going to squeeze all this into there. But you can see it's quite a bit different. There's quite a lot more going on. But it's actually really simple. So let's first talk about how each of these light systems work. Okay, so the different types of headlight bulb exist. The ones I'm fitting today are H1 socket. But the ones I'm going to be drawing out for you are H7 socket. And the reason I'm choosing to draw out H7 socket is because personally I just find H7s are just a much easier bulb to sort of explain. But all headlight bulbs work on the same principle if they are halogen. What colour pen? Let's pick the purple one. The purple pen. Let's, uh, let's have a bit of a write. So, the bulb, the bulb, the bulb. It is a glass chamber shaped something very terribly like this comes up at the top so a bit of a point like that not quite flicks across like that and it comes down in sort of cylinder shape it's normally straight it's not normally all curvy something like this and then it normally comes down a bit like that then you have the metal sort of latching piece and you have two prongs one of these is positive one of these is negative it doesn't matter it's a bulb it doesn't care it's not polarity sensitive and the reason I'm mentioning this is because LEDs and HIDs are 
halogen bulbs, which is what this is, I'll just write at the top. Uh, halogen, very crudely, very quickly, and very scrawly. Halogen bulb. It literally is a bulb that has a bit of wire come up to a filament and then back down. I know if I've drawn a H7 bulb, which is what this is, I've drawn that wrong. H7 bulbs actually have a vertical filament, not a horizontal one, but just for purposes, just to make it simple to explain like that. And literally the way these work is this filament, that sort of is like a coil of wire going like this and this and this and this and this and so on. This filament is basically just a really, really thin wire. And what happens is when power is flowing across this wire, this wire gets so, so hot, it just starts to glow. And that is literally what causes a light to work. Now, if you're wondering, how does this wire not totally and completely melt itself and blow to pieces? Well, that's why this glass case is here. It's not just there to protect it, but it's also there to stop it from burning out. The reason for this is this is um, had all the like oxygen and stuff pulled out of it. It's had a vacuum formed on it and it's been refilled with gas, halogen gas, hence the name. Mm, sometimes different bulbs contain different gases, but in general, halogen gas is the main one. And the reason for this is it stops that this little, little tiny strand of cable, it stops this from just getting um, so oxidized it just blows to pieces basically it just stops that from happening it stops it from overheating it stops it from oxidizing and burning up you can actually smash the glass off a bulb and power it up and it will light up and it'll go really bright for about two seconds and then it will just die because this just get burns up and just gets so so hot it melts well, the gas inside of here although the bulb still gets hot it stops it from melting and totally killing itself because what happens is as it gets hot, the copper or wherever this filament is made out of, I'm just saying copper because wire, but wherever this filament is made out of basically oxidizes real quick. And that causes it to burn and break because it goes brittle. So this glass cylinder around it protects it from doing that. So that's halogen bulb. Xenon bulbs are a little bit different. So they still have whatever socket you've got, whatever fitment you've got, but they have a small glass chamber that comes up like this, a really thin little glass chamber, like that. And then they have a wire that comes up like this, and then bends over and then back in at the center, at the top. And let's just draw like the socket, something like that. Um, inside of here, you normally have like a bit of a tube. There's normally, you'll see like a, a bubble thing somewhere around there, and just a bit more wire and tube and so on. And then it's got two wires come out, positive and negative now in terms of the actual the, the xenon bulb itself again polarity doesn't matter for this part but what feeds into the ballast is what matters so because a bulb is just basically a thin strand of wire it doesn't matter if power's flowing this way or if power's flowing this way either way this is still going to have power flow through it it's going to get hot and therefore it's going to light up so a normal bulb you know you can wire them anyway and they will work let me let me um I was about to say, let me demonstrate. Yeah, let me demonstrate that. I have got a bulb knocking around here somewhere. Where's it gone? I had a, I did have a bulb. I don't want to fetch the one out of my headlight. I'm going to put back in. But I want to show this for video purposes. Ah, there it is, found it. So, as you can see, if I take, I've got two wires here. These are fed from a car battery, okay? So these have both got 12 volts on the end. My yellow and green wire is positive. My blue wire is negative, and I'll show you that with the meter, so you'll see I've got around about 15 volts on these wires, which is sort of the maximum operating voltage that a car alternator will get. So if I stick black into blue and red into yellow and green, we get a positive 15 volts. And I say 15 volts is sort of like the maximum your car alternator will charge at. Now, if I flip these rounds, so if I put black to positive and red to negative, you'll see it will show negative 15 volts like that. So you've got the negative symbol now. If I put it right again, it's DC. So 
we know that these wires are polarity sensitive. So if I connect this wire to positive, and if I just get a screw or something just to touch that, uh, touch that ball with, oh, I've lost. I had everything out like two seconds ago. It's all disappeared. What kind of sorcery is this? Have I got some sort of ghost messing with me? Probably. Not gonna lie. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, let's have this. Okay. So if we give it a ground, bulb lights. If I take this wire from here and then plug it in the other way around, so now positive is going into the blue, positive in effect, whatever. But you can see, whichever way around I power it, it still works. That wouldn't be the case for LED or Xenon. Well, actually, the Xenon bulb itself, again, doesn't actually carry the polarity. And the reason for that is the way Xenon bulbs create light. Xenon bulbs work by um, an electrical arc. So instead of power, a cable that gets so hot it glows, this actual electrical arc, um, which is basically just a big spark. This is So this is generated by a big spark, which just excites the xenon gas. I'll, I'll write out it, xenon. Excites the xenon gas and cause it to light up and very brightly at that. Now this could be positive, this could be negative, or this could be positive and this could be negative. It doesn't matter. This bulb itself doesn't care what polarity. However, the ballast, which is what powers the bulb, does. So the, the ballast literally has the wire goes off to the xenon bulbs, like so. And then power comes into the ballast. And if you wire a ballast the wrong way, the bulb won't light. The, the ballast itself, this is the ballast, it's basically the driver for the bulb. Um, this basically has to have power going in the correct polarity in order for it to light. However, some ballasts output in AC and some output in DC. Now, if you're not 100% clued up on electrics, DC stands for direct current. This means that power always flows in one direction and one direction only. Your car runs on DC, it is a 12 volt DC. AC stands for alternating current. And that means literally exactly that. So like direct current, where power is always flowing in one direction and one direction only, AC, alternating current, is constantly alternating. It's constantly going this way, but it's constantly going that way. It's constantly changing. Your mains plug sockets in your house are AC. They are constantly changing. They are 50 hertz, which means it changes 50 times a second. Now, what the ballast does, sometimes you get DC ballast, sometimes you get AC ballast. Either way, they both have to have the polarity going correctly. But what that means is what comes out of here it can be either AC or DC. AC ballasts are better than DC ones, but I'm not going to go technical about that. All the ballast is doing is driving the xenon bulb. It is igniting the bulb, it is striking the bulb first, and it does that by boosting the voltage quite high. I believe it's somewhere around 20,000 volts, which is massive, massive amount of power. And it, and it temp for a moment, does that to strike an arc across the bulb, to get the bulb ignited. Once the bulb is ignited, it then drops down to about 85 volts. It runs 85 volts, but I believe they can shoot up as high as 20 kilovolts to strike the bulb. Not necessarily always, but I don't think necessarily always, but I'm pretty sure they get as high as 20 kilovolts to strike the bulb. So there's the difference between xenon and halogen bulbs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this cover off here. And the reason I'm doing this is because to get access to the bulb, to change it. Now I'm actually just going to unplug both these wires. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my power supply and I'm going to power up this standard halogen bulb so we can take a look at what it looks like. So let's just plug that one on there, dead simple, and plug this one onto here. Now I'll try and want to get it so I can show you as I plug it in, so I can show you it light up. So uh, here we go. It's dead. Going on here. Turns out that bulb's gone, so I'll put another bulb in it so I can demonstrate. So, this is what a halogen headlight looks like. So, I don't know how you're picking this up on camera, 
Let me just adjust the uh, lighting. Let's turn the big light off. Now this is a very warm white colour. It's a very sort of yellowy sort of colour. And you can see that you're not being blinded because, as I say, because that cut off and the beam pan out a lot. If I actually bring the light up more so, you'll see at that sort of point you get blinded. But if I bring it below the beam cut off, you know, and I, I talk about this, about bringing, as I say, I've already spoke about this, about the, the cut off, bringing it up and down. Now, and that's totally normal. And the reason I'm showing you that is because, you know, if we look at the light cut off, we can see we've got that light cut off on the desk. And that's really important because if we fit a Zenin kit to a reflector headlight, that beam pattern won't be there. There'll be just light scattered absolutely everywhere and we'll be blinding people. So let's get the Zenin kit fit to this projector headlight and see what it looks like. So I'm going to fit in the Zenin to the dipped beam bulb. So first things first, we're going to take out our old bulb. So it's going to push down the tab, lift it up, pull it out. There's our old bulb. Set that down. We are done. We're going to grab our Zenin kit, which I've got here. Okay. And just for now, I'm going to disconnect the ballast just to get rid of this, just to tidy things up. So we've got uh, less in the way and we can just work with just the, the bulb, basically. So the Zenon bulb is protected by this cap here. So we just unscrew like that, pull the bottom bit down and off like so. And then these little discs just sort of pop off like so. And they split like that so you can just pull it over the wire. And then finally the actual bit with the screw thread will pop out over the top like that. You now notice how I'm being extremely careful not to touch the glass of the bulb. That's really important because if you touch the glass of this bulb, your finger oils, your natural finger oils will create hot spots. And what that will do is it will significantly reduce the lifespan of the bulb because the bulb will heat up a lot hotter in certain areas than others. And then eventually the glass will melt or crack and it will cause basically the gas to leak out and the bulb to not work. And that applies to halogens as well. As, I, as, as I'll mention later on, if this... That's now broke. But if this glass gets damaged or whatever, that um, gas inside, the halogen gas or whatever is inside of there, will leak out and cause the bulb to pack in. So, let's get this fitted. So, the way you fit these, um, you literally just sync it up exactly as your old bulb came out. Bulbs only fit in one orientation into the socket. They've got different ways to make sure the orientation is correct so in the case of these h1 bulbs there's, there's an edge cut off here and they've got these little dimples either side and that makes sure that the bulb only fits in in exactly the right way it only fits in that way and once it goes in it's you can with that round it doesn't wiggle but if i try and fit this in any other way it doesn't go in very easily it's a bit of a squeeze and it's it's not sitting in nicely it's sitting a bit loose and it's exactly the same on these hrd retrofits you've got the the nibble off the side you've got the little dimples so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be fitting this. And you want to fit this ideally with this wire pointing down. It's not 100% easy to get it that way. It might not necessarily sit in that way. In my case, I can already tell you it will. But ideally, you need it so this strand of wire points down. So insert the bulb. Make sure that's sat in. That's sat in nicely. Bring the metal tab back over. And just the same as fitting any other bulb, that's that fitted i can't get that over it's exactly the same fitting a zenon bulb as any other bulb the only difference is the way it looks and the way it acts but that bulb is now fitted it's in there securely and that is done the bulb is fitted now what's left all we've got to do is wire up the ballast so that is simple as plugging that connector into the, get the right connector into the right hole and that connector into there and then that connector into there it's completely foolproof you can only do it the right way and these would take from your original car loom on this bung here and then you'd originally plug them you know positive to positive negative to negative and you'd have to unplug that the ground wire off the actual socket if it's a h1 fitment because it grounds through the socket so you'd unplug that off the socket and then plug that into like so but in this case, I'm not going to actually be demonstrating like that um, because I'm not plugged into the car. So I'm just going to hook it up to this little power supply I've got here, which use the same spade terminals. And uh, we'll see how this light looks. 
So um, just grab the wires. Let's uh, let's give it a ground for a start. Cool. And now let me point this up so you can see how the Zen bulb looks when it fires up. And I'm going to turn off big light so we get a proper look at this. Three, two, one. Well, that's eventful. Technical fault diagnosed. That ballast is dead. So, <laughs> I'm doing really well here, aren't I? Me LED bulbs are dead. I have one dead ballast. I'll swap the ballast over and it lights up. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, could anything else go wrong today? Yeah, it could, yeah. Okay, so this is this is what the Zenon looks like when it comes on. Now, notice how. It's took a little bit, bit, little bit of time to warm up, but it is so, so much brighter. And again, you can see, like this, you're not being blinded. But if I bring the, the light cut off up, you get absolutely blind out like mad. Again, down here, below, you know, you're above the light cut off. So, you know, getting blinded. You, 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 the point of you of a driver, oncoming driver. Bring you down to the floor, you're the road, you're getting blinded because you are the road. And it is extremely bright. And it is a Zenon, so it's extremely bright because Zenons are. Okay, so that is my daytime running lights on now. And if we switch the low beams on, see that flash as it lit up? And now it's getting brighter. That's getting really bright. Wow. Now on camera, it looks like a really, really blue color, but it's not, it is more of a white color. Kind, it is actually kind of a bit more blue than I was like hoping for, but that does look good. Wow, that is very bright down there. So if we compare to this side, you can see it's bright by coming down. If you look at this side, you can't even look into it because it just totally blinds out the camera because it's just so bright. But obviously because we've got the correct beam pan, as you can see, we've got a nice cut off and that lot. It's gonna be fine. It's not gonna blind everyone. So let's get to the other side. You can just see the difference. Look at that. 